Fluvial Systems and Channel Fields A fluvial system is a natural water course flowing in straight or curved pathway over sloping landscape towards an ocean, sea, lake or another river. Typically, there are three stages for a river cycle. The upper stage, uh, more in the up-deep areas, which is largely erosional. The mid stage, which has erosion and deposition uh, at the same time, depending on where you are uh, in, in the basin. And the lower stage, which is dominantly depositional. Now, if we consider a profile from the up-deep areas uh, where you have very high angles all the way to the down-deep areas where it becomes horizontal. So this is saying that in the upper stage of or the early life of a river, uh, we have dominance of uh, erosion, of course, because in the upper areas, there is uh, the impact of gravity uh, is there and uh, you have high angle or high gradient of, of the of the slope and lots of lots of sediments. So you're going to have vertical uh, downward uh, or rapid avalanching of, of, of the sediments in the form of mass flow uh, all the way down. And then as you go further out, uh, where the, the gradient evens out a little bit. Now, depending on the amount of sediment and the strength of the flow media, you have uh, a combination of erosion and deposition. Further out, where the energy is waned by this time, it's more like close to the uh, end of life of the uh, river or close to the end of the cycle, uh, the energy is not enough to make vertical or to cut vertically down into the substrate. So you're going to have um, dominance of um, erosion. So overall, flow occurs from the upstream or the topographically, um, you know, shallower areas to the downstream uh, areas, which are um, topographically or deeper, or in terms of elevation, uh, generally deeper. Uh, the behavior of each uh, fluvial system depends on, you know, the gradients, the the nature of the supplying rocks, uh, the volume of sediments and proximity to source, the energy of the medium. Uh, as well as the nature of the underlying rock. There are a number of elements, uh, about four elements considered in describing uh, a channel. First of all, the amount of separation or splitting around barriers in the form of sandbars or islands. The degree and frequency of bends or twists along the channel pathway. The number of single or connected uh, channel pathways as well as uh, the amount of or the, the extent of narrowness or broadness uh, of, of the channel bed. And now, and now that speaks to the width to channel ratio. So this is showing the different classification, uh, straight uh, or meandering. Uh, this too uh, speaks to the amount of, you know, the nature of the, the, speaking to the nature of the channel in terms of the amount of bend or curve you have along the channel pathway. Uh, the other two groups are the braided and the anastomosin, which speaks to how much of splits uh, or how much of movement you have around uh, uh, barriers in the form of uh, longitudinal or, or, you know, point bars or, you know, sandbars generally. So there is um, um, an element called the sinuosity ratio or some authors call it sinuosity index. Uh, and that's part of what one of one of the elements used in classifying, um, you know, fluvial systems or rivers. And that that sinuosity ratio is actually uh, the distance, the ratio between the distance along the channel pathway or the the river itself, the whole length of the river, uh, divided by the distance from the point of entry to the point of exit uh, of of the river. So in this case. Along this, uh, you know, river system, this is the entry and this is the exit. So for these two points, if we go along the pathway, that's along the blue line, uh, that's the total distance along the river itself. And then if we divide that by the shortest distance connecting the point of entry to the point of exit, that's AB. So that ratio is called the sinuosity ratio or the sinuosity index. Now, where the sinuosity ratio is uh, about 1.1 or less, uh, it's classified as a straight river or a straight uh, channel. Uh, where it is between 1.1 to 1.5 is sinuous, and uh, where it's above 1.5, these authors have classified it as um, 
meandering. Now, some of these um, values may, may you know, differ very slightly for different authors, but overall they all fall within a similar band. This is an outcrop, uh, well, just an outcrop visited that shows a bunch of gullies. Now, the idea here is to show how the, you know, the amount of, um, you know, bend or the, the sinuosity ratio can be used or is used in classifying these uh, fluvial systems or channels into uh, sinuous, straight or meandering systems. So if we, if we consider the first from the left, uh, we observe uh, over a particular distance along this, uh, you know, gully or in quotes channel, there isn't a lot of bend. So that's, uh, that's one. And then if you check out the middle one, uh, we see that over similar distance, over a similar distance, we, we don't see a lot of, um, um, we see that this, this, the, the, the system seems to show a couple bend over about the same distance. And that tells me that the sinuosity ratio uh, will be slightly higher or will be higher than the first uh, channel A. Now for channel C, uh, what, what you observe is that uh, a lot more distance is covered over, uh, you know, from points, let's say from a point here where it enters, where it's like the beginning of the channel, all the way to this other point. So we see that a lot more distance is covered because of significant uh, bend or turns that we see along the pathway. So uh, this, if you want to go by that, that analogy, we could classify channel A as straight, B as sinuous, and um, the third one as meandering. So thank you. That's all we have for now. Um, hopefully we'll have another part of this discussion in the next um, episode. Do, do follow us on YouTube uh, and on Facebook and uh, do not hesitate to send an email if you do have questions. Thank you very much.